The Red Wings show signs of life as they lose to the Minnesota Wild 6-5 to five at Little Caesars Arena. Your Locked On Red Wings, your daily podcast on the Detroit Red Wings, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, welcome back to the Lockdown Red Wings podcast. We are your hosts, Brian Fisher and Scotty Bentley. Uh, Scotty, also a host over at Lockdown Tigers, and the lockout is finally over. He has stuff to talk about. Let me oh. tell you, man, tomorrow, that today's episode of Lockdown Tigers is probably my favorite episode I've ever recorded, and it's uh, it's an absolute doozy. I'm, you just burned I'm through all that adrenaline. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was, I mean, right at working, right after the Wings game, that was a roller coaster of emotions and a lot of got me amped up and then baseball back. I, I've been, I've been, I've been riding all day, baby. Do you have, do you still have some energy left to uh, spare for me? I'm talking about Bro, this doozy of a Red Wings game. After what I saw happen to, to Lucas, I got energy for days, baby. So, First, I want to thank you guys for making us your first listen every single day. We are free and available on all platforms. About like 480 subscribers now, quickly approaching on uh, 500. Let's uh, let's get there, guys. Let's do it. Also, um, feel free to drop us a review on either Spotify or Apple. You can rate us on either of those. That'd be awesome and appreciated. But uh, honestly, Scotty, you know we we tend to like to do these reviews in order of events or like what stood out most to us. But I feel like. Neither of us is going to be able to do an actual review of this game and talk about the events of this game until we talk about the thing that stood out the most. And that was that scrum at the end of the second period that resulted in Dumba on top of Lucas Raymond, a defenseless Lucas Raymond, while he's bleeding out of the back of his head and throwing punches at Lucas Raymond and just how much of a low-life move that is by Dumba to do something like that to a 19 year old kid who's defenseless and then go on to not accept any challenge for a fair fight throughout the rest of the game. Yep. No, Rass tried to do it pretty quickly thereafter. Uh, this is a game that you wish Giovanni Smith was dressed. Yes. For, baby. You wish you like, uh, just imagine uh, you just, Cause you know he wouldn't uh, he wouldn't have given a damn if he got a, a roughing he, whatever it's just, I'm Giovanni Smith baby I'm bought it uh but no it's it's it it's it's embarrassing for them They're, I I don't know I don't know how a, a, as a player for Dumba or as a, as a, as a team as an organization you're just like oh yeah we'll just shake that one off. It's embarrassing. They should be embarrassed. So that scrum began because of the fact that Nadelkovich got sucker punched in the face just trying to cover the it's puck. Threw a punch. They just threw a punch. Oh, at the it, it all face. started with the. It all started with a pat. What are we talking about? Yeah. He got, how about he got punched in the face? Well, how and about then the, that started it. The broadcast is a completely different topic, which I also want to top on, uh, talk about because three three straight games of these ESPN broadcasts, and every single one is hammered home how ill-prepared these ESPN broadcasts are and just like not just any individual one person and I won't say names because I'm above that but the whole broadcast as a whole has just been well, it's underwhelming. also not anyone individually it's the yeah. whole product there's just no need to say names because it's all bad yeah all of it and so the the fight or not the fight but the scrum so to speak first of all refs let the goalies fight everyone wants to see the goalies let fight. fight let, let the, the goalies boys fight bang. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, so Raymond was on top of Dumba and held him there for a good 45 seconds without throwing a single punch. Holding and pinning your guy during a scrum is kind of the go-to, but most people do, to actually avoid getting into a fight. How about we look at everyone else on the yeah. ice? That was mm -hmm. happening four different times. So Dumba then Larkin flips... Was, had it he just flips Raymond's uh, flips Raymond over, rips his helmet off. Raymond's head smacks the ice. He's bleeding, and while that's happening, 
he's punching Raymond while he's on the ice defenseless. And I, that just shows, and I, I understand that tensions ride high, but when tensions ride high, players still manage to show the littlest bit of respect for a player's well-being, much like Lucas Raymond did not 15 seconds before that happened when he had Dumba pinned, didn't throw a single punch. Because guess what? Dumba was defenseless. The fact that Dumba could not mirror that respect and started punching a defenseless player on the ice with, who didn't have his helmet on and was bleeding out of the back of his head shows a lack of care and respect for the well-being of your fellow human. And I don't give a crap about what anyone has to say about anything, about to defend that kind of action, because it is absolutely unacceptable. And I want the DP, uh, the DOPS to do something, but I know they won't. Yeah, no, they, they, they won't. Cause that's uh, yeah. Same stuff, different day there. But it's it, like I said, it, it should be embarrassed. You should be embarrassed. Like, there is, there's no defending it. Oh, we didn't see the blood. First off, yes, he freaking did. He's on top of him. It's a, it's a pool, and he's on top of him. So, yes, he did. Second off, doesn't matter. It, 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 he's got him pinned to the ice on top of him, and he's throwing punches on someone who can't defend himself. It's all irrelevant. There's no counter. Regardless, it's just being an ass. Regardless of whether or not he could see the blood, that's that's beside the point. If you have a player pinned on the ice and they're defenseless, you don't throw punches. That's hockey 101. Because if fighting is going to be a part of this game and it's going to maintain or remain as a part of this game for the foreseeable future, there's a code of conduct that goes along with that kind of physicality. And attacking defenseless players when they're on the ice is one of those things you cannot do because it can lead to long-term injury. You punch a defenseless player on the ice, you're going to be bashing their head against the ice. He was already bleeding. So regardless of whether or not he was bleeding or not, you don't do that under any circumstance. I don't care what the tension, how high the tensions are. There have been many moments in the past where tensions are high and you don't do that. Yeah. How, how about the fact that with a lot of players now, you, you see somebody win a fight they hold the jersey. Make sure his head doesn't hit off the ice. Mm -hmm. There's there's plenty of precautions that plenty of players in the history of this beautiful game have done to not have that kind of situation happen. I mean, we see all the time when people fight. They you know it's oh nice job afterwards or oh a little stick tap like it's 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 preposterous. What 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 went down? It's it's inexcusable. Well, and, and it's a 19 year old kid that's bleeding out of the back of his head, and you you're in that situation, and and your thought is, oh yeah, I'm just gonna wail on it. Grow up, grow up. Yeah, no, it's just. And the fact that afterwards, in the third period, he kept declining every challenge. Like, dude, nut up. Get, like, just own up to this. Remember in the playoffs, was it this last playoffs, where John Tavares got kneed in the head, and it was a complete accident. And just, But just to clear the air, because he knew it was an accident, and he didn't mean, I think it was Corey Perry that did it, if, I, if I'm recalling correctly, to John Tavares, just, in, just by passing by. He got, they, they needed to do, do a fight after. I thought it was stupid to get, have to even have to do that knowing it was an accident, but I understand the sentiment that you had to clear the air. Corey Paris did not decline the fight because he knew that it was just like, we got to do this to move on. You get, you accept that fight, you move on. But Dumbo was, I've, I've vented. Yeah, I feel better, Dumbo. Scotty. You said his name right. Dumbo. No longer Dumbo. He's a Dumbo. <sighs> I just needed to get that frustration out because I well, mean, we obviously, can't talk about anything else without a, a, yeah, it without just addressing been the elephant in the room the entire time. So yeah, yeah. Like we can't put that off to the third segment and finally talk about it. Like 
It, it, it was just... It's a joke. When you have one of the joke. most lauded rookies in the, in the league right now, one of the most exciting rookies to watch, getting wailed on by a 30-something-year-old. I don't even know how old Dumba is, to be honest. Who cares? But, but he's a veteran in this league, a guy who's much stronger than him, and you're wailing on him, but then to decline fights from other people your own size later in a game, like, I just... it's Rasmussen it's just wanted it. Rasmussen, Rasmussen wanted did. all the smoke. To fight him too. Rasmussen wanted all the smoke. Ugh, and he went but... nah, nah, and skated away. Screw <laughs> off, man. What a Anyways. Joke. We will talk about the real game uh, uh, after this. But first, I got to talk to you guys about Built Bar. It's that time of year. You guys are all giving up on your New Year's resolutions. I know you guys are. We all do it. We've all done it. I've done not it. Not me. Mine's eating healthy, and I'm not. Oh, because Scott is eating Built Bars like you, any, all of you should be if you're not already. It's literally not a resolution because they're not fantastic. A resolution. So. Because Built Bars taste so good that you'll actually enjoy eating them. It won't seem like a burden. That's because they're covered in 100% real chocolate, and that includes those puffs that I've been telling you so much about. So good. They're low calorie, high protein. Replace your candy bars with these. They are better. A typical candy bar can be anywhere from two to 300 calories. Go to built.com and scroll to their macros chart. You'll be blown away. High protein, low cal, high fiber, low carb. Most built bars contain 130 calories, four grams of sugar, four net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. Compare that to a candy bar, which normally has around 240 calories, 30 grams of sugar, and dozens of net carbs. At Built.com, they are all about the taste. They make it taste delicious first and figure out how to make it healthy. And I don't know how, but they just manage to pull it off every single time. So go to Built.com, use promo code LOCKED15 and get 15% off your order. Use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. .com. All right, Scotty, let's uh, get into the, the real the real meat of this recap talking about this six five loss to the Minnesota Wild at Little Caesars Arena and a shootout last night. First of all, shootouts are stupid. I'm so done with shootouts. Shootouts are dumb. They are stupid. It was such a bad way and shouldn't exist. How do you watch that game start to finish and you go, you know what this needs? This needs to end in a shootout. <laughs> like, come on, man. Just a frustrating way to end such what was other besides what we had just talked about in the first segment. Otherwise, it was a really great game. Like, and I, I think the first and foremost thing that sticks out in my head about how what this game was and how good this game was for the Red Wings after the stretch that they had was the resiliency. And I said it in my my short one minute recap that we post on our social media pages that this team had a resilient resiliency and fight that they haven't been showing in previous matches against tough, well. Not even just tough teams, any team. I mean, we saw yeah. how they looked against the Coyotes. There was no fight. They got down early in this game. First shot of the game goes in. Something we've been hearing nothing about in the last seven games because for some reason the Red Wings let goals in as soon as a shot is taken in the game, and it makes no sense. What do they do? Jacob Vrana immediately ties it up on an assist from Joe Valeno. Okay, you're like, all right, so they, they, you know it's not all doom and gloom yet. We've seen that before. You let a goal in, they tie it up, and then it falls apart. Robbie Fabry scored right after the Coyotes did uh, against the uh, against the Coyotes the other night. Then Alex Ander Nadelkovich swatted it in his own net. I'm like, okay, now it's gonna fall apart. Now that we're gonna tough, fall apart. Man, that was tough that was to really watch, tough. and that's not one we're gonna live down anytime soon. No, nope. um, as his struggles continue in this one as well. But then. Lucas Raymond on an amazing play by Nick Letty. Ties oh, it up. Spin cycle. Spin cycle. Spin cycle, baby. Spin cycle. That was nasty. So that was the that's really the my biggest takeaway from this game, Scotty, is that the fight that hasn't been there in previous games against all these teams that Red Wings have faced was there in this one. They they w- clearly wanted to break this skid and prove like that game against the Coyotes was an outlier and that this tough stretch is an outlier, and that's not what they are this season. And this game, even though they lost, I think they proved it. For sure. And a lot of people were talking about, I mean, last episode we talked about Blaschel. Oh, it's your job to hype the guys up for no matter your opponent. Well, they came in ripping and roaring today. Uh, No no matter what your opinion of Blaschel is, there's without a doubt, there was a, there was a a kick in every single player's pants today, man. That was that, 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 like you said, that showed fight. Um, The man, the, the Letty, I mean, it, you know it's a good setup when there's literally no goalie in the net for your shot. 
There, it was a <laughs> wide open net, dog. Like Raymond just had a one timer. There is no one in that. It was just an empty netter. It literally was an empty netter. It was crazy. It was really, really nice. And Nick Letty had probably his best game as a Red Wing so far this season. And uh, he must really want to go to con- uh, go to a contender because he had an out of his mind game. You know what? 10 days before the trade deadline. He had that uh, obviously spin cycle assist on Lucas Raymond's goal. And then he had another assist later in the game as well. He looked like he was in complete control of the game out there tonight. And, you know, that's something we've been wanting to see out of Nick Letty all season long. And, you know, it's really nice to see that out of him playing on a defensive pair with Moritz Sider today as well. Yeah, no. And, and I mean, Sider was throwing, was throwing heat. So, <laughs> Mo was, Mo was knocking people down left and right. I mean, as he's been doing all season, but no, Mo, uh, this is the kind of game that when it gets really chippy and really physical like that, you go, we have Lucas or we, we have Murad Sider. Like yeah. that's just such a refreshing feeling. I mean, like, Oh, things get a little ahead. Things get a little chippy. Well, we got, we got Mo on the blue. So like, I, <laughs> I think we're going to be all right. Well, and Moritz Sider um, also just is, was doing what we've come to expect from Moritz Sider, where he it was just running people over, and then somebody would come to hit him, and he'd run them over. Remember at the beginning of the season, I don't want to get, I don't want to go off the rails too much. But remember at the beginning of the season, when we were talking about Moritz Sider and how we weren't seeing that physical part of the game we saw so much of in Sweden. He was more like a stay-at-home defensive defenseman. He was doing really good, and now how like that's kind of shifted, where he's taken on a much more offensive defenseman role, and he's just laying guys out. Like it's just. He's been good the entire season, but it's just like that dynamics kind of shifted. He's still very good, but in like a, a slightly different way as he gets more comfortable taking a more active role on defense instead of just uh, shutting everything down type play. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think as he continues to grow, man, it's like we are not too far off from just the perfect – mix of all of the both of those styles and all of those different ways you can play D man at the NHL level all mixing into one person and he is going to be OP. Yeah. Oh absolutely. And then Lucas Raymond, nothing to sneeze at either. He had two goals in this game. Both uh, from Letty. Both, both great from passes Letty. from both Letty. Great passes. The one yeah. we already talked about, but not to go under the radar, the second setup was with Beauty too. Yeah, that's I mean, and you of course had Jacob Vrana now having was it I think I've said it wrong like two times now on social 13 media. 13 points in 12 games. I So he had 11 He had eleven points in 11 games, not 10 points in 10 games. He had 11 points in 11 games with the Red Wings last season. <laughs> and so he had three points in two games. So he's at 14 points in 13 <laughs> games. I love you, Brian. With the Detroit Red Wings. <laughs> That's what happens when I, I tweet faster without t- checking my stats. And I'm just like, I'm so excited. Did you so, see did you see me reply to it? Uh, yes, you did. I did. I just replied dot 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 after you said <laughs> correction. I was like, I give this to I've let this dude be in charge of Twitter one night and look what happens. <laughs> Didn't even get stats right. But like and I tried to take a shot at you before the game started. I'm like, so like this Twitter thing, I just got tweeting all caps or whatever. And like as soon as the game started and like things started popping off, I'm going all caps and I like have Later on, I like tweeted at you. I'm like, I apologize to Scotty Bellman. I understand now it's unavoidable. <laughs> Man, it is, especially. I mean, especially in, in the kind of game that we saw tonight, for sure. Like I was teasing you, and then like halfway through, I'm like, oh, crap, I'm doing it too. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. <laughs> so um, hard. Especially if the Dumba fired me up, even on my personal account. I was like, are you kidding me? Yeah. Like, what is going on? Like, it was, I, almost, I almost tweeted uh, on the Red Wings account after the game. I always tweeted, I, I let Brian be in charge for one night, and we're dropping F-bombs on this account. <laughs> this is ridiculous. I, I never dropped the F-bomb on the, L, the Red Wings account, only on you my personal. You retweeted it on the Red oh, Wings I account, I did. Though. You're right. You're right. That did happen. Um. But yes, Jacob Verana has been everything we had hoped for in these first two games. Um, he played on the third line tonight with Joe Valeno and Sam Gagne. And I think that's something we got to talk about too. And once we get, we were running up on another ad here, but once we get to the third segment, you know, it's time to pull up that hockey stat card and that Absolutely. heat map that has become kind of iconic to our, our podcast to just like really showcase how good he has been. But man. It's good to have Rana back. He is he's a is. Sni- he is a sniper, man. He he's a scorer. He's a scorer, baby. And it's it's so nice. Again, I mean, we've said it a billion times that uh, we don't need to go in depth on it or anything, but 
it just it, it it's so nice not only the fact that he can score but the depth that just his presence provides on the team is yeah. is irreplaceable unreplaced well, non it's not irreplaceable bingo i'm a program um there are is the i just you know what i'll save it just like you'll be saving tons of money when you go to betonline.net it's that time of year again as the college basketball tournament sure. is finally upon us from all the latest odds contests and player props, BetOnline.net is the number one source for all your sports betting needs and info. BetOnline remains the best spot for all your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. And it's not just basketball. BetOnline is your continued source for all your sports wagering information needs, including live betting and your favorite Vegas casino games. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. BetOnline. BetOnline. Where the game starts. Uh, yeah, so Vrana equals very good. Um, that is my analysis. Yeah, it's good. It's good analysis. <laughs> no, yeah. but for real. And I'll, I'll pull up the hockey stat card now. Uh, just so it, cause it, ba- it backs up everything that I've been seeing and it backs up some, some, something I've been seeing about something we've been saying about a certain player a lot lately. Um, you can see here your top three players on hockey stat card who had nothing but a positive impact on this game, offensively, individually, and defensively were number one. Joe Valeno, number two, Jacob Vrana, and number three, Sam Gagne. That was line number three for you tonight. The entire third line was all positive impact in every single facet of the hockey game. Absolutely. And they only play, only managed to play seven minutes and 58 seconds together because eventually um, Robbie Fabry got hurt and had to leave the game and could not return. But those three players had an absolute phenomenal game today. And, or last night at this time, by the time you're listening to this. And it, it's nice to see, especially with Joe Valeno, somebody we've been talking about as like, you can tell he's been gaining confidence lately. You know, we were bagging on him and, and I wouldn't say bag. We were fair. I think about, he was underperforming our expectations. We're always fair. What are we talking he, about? Right before we sent him down to the grand Rapids Griffins before the all-star break, he started playing better. He goes to grand Rapids, goes on a tear. Ever since he's come back from grand Rapids, he's taken his game to the next level. And it's nice to see in games like a very good Minnesota team on a third line, to see that reflected everything he was doing on and off the puck was working. There were two times where the puck got on a stick and his stick turned Swiss cheese and he whiffed on the puck. But even outside of that, he still had an incredibly uh, positive impact. And I'm sure that playing with Jacob Verona helps. Yeah, I'm sure it does. But it's like you said, it's just nice to see that confidence that we were waiting for him to find is finally here and it's it's one thing if he was to have this good of a game against. Honestly, I can't even say that after the what happened in in against the Coyotes the other night. Would have been nice to see this against anybody, but it makes it even nicer that it's against <laughs> a very good Wild team. Well, also as well as uh, you know, obviously you can see Nick Letty on here had a positive offensive and individual impact, and a heavy heavily outweigh, outweighs the negative defensive impact he's had because he's an offensive defenseman. Um, Phil Zadina is fifth on this list and he had nothing but a positive impact offensively, defensively and miscellaneous. So he had that pass. That's exactly what I was going to. And that probably carries a lot of the weight, but, and I think that was the, was that the goal that Nadelkovich got an assist on? I don't think it was. No, that was not it. No, but the fact that, um, Phil Zadina carried that puck into the zone and showcased Excellent patience to go around the net and wait for somebody to open up. And Osterley got available. What first of all, what an amazing shot that was by Osterley. I didn't know he could shoot the puck like that. But what it's a, nice to what, see Phil Zadina with the patience. What a snipe. That thing was a rocket, baby. Oh, that yeah. was a slapper. Dearborn what? native. Let's go. He's played in uh in USA Ice Arena before. <sighs> Once or twice, maybe. Once or twice. <laughs> so I mean Overall, there was a lot of positive. I think the defense played a lot more of a cohesive game than they have in recent weeks. I mean, it's that speaking of heat maps, let's, that's reflected in the heat map as well. Um, where you see well, get, also, the goals we, I mean, we from. just had uh, what Letty played the best game of his Red Wings career. Yeah, and that helps, like and comfortably, really helps. right? But, and then cider is cider. Uh, and and I mean I mean there, there, we got some good performances all across the board and and like you said I mean we have the heat map up here now if you're watching on the tube, um, 
but the 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 defense we still have those those big dark blue circles right in front of the net there but it's a lot more um what am I, what's the word I'm trying to find a lot more what pinpointed yeah like it's still something you have to work on it's still something that ideally you'd like to eliminate but you know so no, you you're right, and uh, that's something I was going to bring up. Is that this is this is a little bit of evidence that, of course, the defense was still not great, but the defense was better in this game, comparatively speaking. And you can see that reflected in the heat map. Normally, that dark blue or red bubble is all around the net, and this time it's separated into two two circles on either side of that, which means the defense was doing a good job. But you can see it when you watch the game at pushing the scoring opportunities to the outsides of the net. Still down low in dangerous spots, but not dead set in front of Nadelovic right. where they're going to have literally more right shooting angles. So right. now they're off to the side, which cuts down on the shooting angles. And you can see you know, only two of their goals in this game actually came from inside the slot. And that's still too, too many, but it's an improvement over what we have been seeing the last few games. Right. We're comparing apples to, to apples, as Brian would say. I mean, yes, we're comparing, thank you, Scotty, for that. We're, compa- <laughs> we're comparing... <laughs> A one game to the to the sample size of, of a really rough defensive season for this team and, and it is a, a an improvement to some extent and like we already talked about cider had a good game nick letty had had the best game of his red wings career there's something to be said for all that letty maybe too little too late to get like a decent return at the deadline maybe not i don't know that's a there's a dumb gm out there who's gonna day, see but... this game and go mm, first round pick let's go is that gm the GM of the Edmonton Oilers. I'm not saying any names. I'm <laughs> I not didn't say it. I, I didn't say name. I, well, Did you say a name? name? I, I, I didn't say a name. I didn't say name. All no. right, we didn't say a name. All right, cool, cool, cool. Um, yeah, I mean, it was the, two, the Red Wings lost, and there was some frustrations to be had in this game, but the fight was there, and I love that. Yvonne and Raymond scoring is always good to see. It's nice to see great individual performances out of players. I mean, the only last the, the, there's like two little things I want to talk about too. Uh, remaining on my 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 literal note card of like bullet points, um, and that is Nedeljkovic. I don't know whether to classify this as a good, bad, or good or bad game for him. I mean, on one hand, he made 36 saves. On the other hand, he let in five goals. So he, he made a let, lot. Of saves. He scored on himself. He did. He literally scored on himself, and that was embarrassing. But he rebounded nicely. He also had an apple in this game, so. Hey, oh, we compare those here. I, I wouldn't say it was a good game, but I think it was definitely a better game from him. And uh, sure, let's hope I that mean, continues a trend. I guess it's a step in the right direction from <laughs> from Arizona, yeah. I guess. Sure, sure. Step forward. Hard to be well, worse. but And unfortunately, forward. and I don't want to be that guy, but Nedeljkovic doesn't score on himself. They win this hockey game. But also... In the same vein, you could say that with literally anything that happens yeah, in the you, hockey game. If one thing goes different, you win. For so, sure, but when you score on happened? yourself. It eh. kind of stands out. Right. Um, you can't be doing that. It, it's it's a big <laughs> blunder, and it'll be on Twitter for the rest of time. But uh, there, there was a lot to like from Ned in this game. For as much as there was a lot to not like, there was also a lot to like. So I think this is one where you just have a, you, you know, you have a selective memory. If you're not, oh, I have a very selective memory. You, trust me, I know. <laughs> you have a, you have a selective memory with with the performance. You you try to focus on all the you know all the highlights, all the things you did well, all the good saves you made, the good situations you uh, you, you responded to, and you try and shake off as as best you can the 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 infamous one plus the other four. The infamous one plus the other four. Um. The last thing I wanted to touch on isn't related to the game itself, but more to the broadcast. Um, who did we piss off to get three straight ESPN broadcasts? I need Ken and Mick back, man. Hey, man, are are we ever going to win a game that's not on Bally? Oh, well, that's right. We did talk about that last night, didn't we? I'm still reasonably sure that that's true. We're like 0-9 or something now on ESPN and TNT games. Yeah. Um, what are we doing? I this specifically so I, I hate people who I don't that's sorry that's a strong word hate. I don't hate people wow. um I yeah, strongly right. dislike when people say things like 
this broadcast is only talking about the other team. Because I feel like any time you watch a nationally televised broadcast, both sides are saying that. Sure. But watching this game, I felt that that was pretty dang true. I would be watching the game, and the Red Wings would do something really nice, and they'd highlight something the Minnesota Wild did just before that. I'm like, can you? And then when the scrum happened, and this is where I got really heated, and it was like, do you guys even pay attention to this ESPN ESPN broadcast? They blame the Delkovich for starting that scrum. It's like, this scrum started, like, when they're talking about who the penalties got divvied out to, they're like, oh, Nadalkovich got that roughing because he started the whole scrum when he punched so-and-so with his blocker. I'm like, are we watching the same freaking game here? This only happened because Nadalkovich got randomly punched in the freaking face trying to cover the puck. The scrum was starting to break out yep. in front of him, and he was, like, literally sitting there trying to cover the puck, and a, a str- he caught a stray. A punch came in, and he got hit in the face. The same thing Marshawn got suspended six games for. It happened to Nedeljkovic, and so of course he's going to get pissed off and get into the scrum. And so you're blaming Nedeljkovic, and then five seconds later, so they established Nedeljkovic had a penalty, and then five seconds later, another color commentator goes in and be like, I think Nedeljkovic has a penalty here. Like, yeah, they just said that. And then five seconds after that, the play is going on. So Raymond's <laughs> in the box because he's part, part of the scrum, and he goes, I don't see Raymond on the ice with this power play. He must be hurt. No, dip, dipstick. They literally just established <laughs> A minute before that, that Raymond was in the box because of the scrum. Where were you? He said dipstick. I wanted to say something else. No, dipstick. And, like, that's what I'm talking about with these broadcasts is that just it, – it feels like there's a lack of attentiveness to the things that are actually going on the on, on the ice. Like, they didn't even know Osterley's name when he scored. And somebody – I can't remember who it was on Twitter. I think it was Red Wings Rant, another Red Wings podcast. Because all of us Red Wings podcasts were, were, were kind of tight together. Um, they tweeted about how, like, Australia scores and they couldn't, they didn't even, it was just silence because they didn't know to say his name. It was like, it kind of was a good thing because they didn't ruin the call. But he was, they were right. Like, Australia scored, then they're like, Red Wings score. And then it's just 10 seconds, 20 seconds of silence. And they never said Australia's name. Yeah, well, they didn't. They, they had yeah. no idea who he was. They still don't know who Austin <laughs> is. <laughs> what is a Dearborn? Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, Mason Raymond's my favorite player. Like, yeah, it's not good. So, I mean, I'm just venting, and I, I understand that these people are people who are, I, I'm sure, are doing their best, but the product ESPN, this is on ESPN to put a better product out, in my opinion. And this this product is not, this ESPN Plus product has not been good. Thus far, not saying it can't get better, uh, I mean, yeah, but thus no, far, it's it, not been good. No, it hasn't. And it's, uh, um, I love the TNT. TNT has uh, been great. Game. They've been fantastic. You know, bringing Gretzky on, having like them mess around with Barkley and stuff like that's fun. Uh, the ESPN plus crews have been, have been pretty rough so far. Yes, but there's always window for improvement. And, uh, I won't end this on a cynical note. I'm going to say that things can always go up from here. That's me trying dabbing? to be positive. Uh, no, I was just... Brian ends the, bar- the show on a dab. This is the uh. bar graph going up. <laughs> oh. All right. Scotty, any final Brian. thoughts? Um, baseball's back. That's good. I hear that's good. Um... Dumbo. <laughs> and uh, we ball. And we ball. Thanks for making Lockdown Red Wings your first listen every day. Now make your second listen Lockdown Fantasy Hockey. Hosts Steel Roden and Flip Livingstone help you become the expert of your fantasy league. It's free and available wherever you get your podcast. Scotty and I will be back on Monday with a new episode. Same time, same place. To your team. Every day. Every day. <laughs>